I'm John Buchanan, and in this episode, what we're going to do is to take a second look at Beatbreaker. Now, Beatbreaker is one of the new plugins that was introduced with Logic 10.8, and we've already had a chance to see how it works, take a bit of a deep dive into its functions. One thing I teasingly said at the end of that episode was, wouldn't it be interesting to try this on vocals? Well, that's exactly what we're going to do in this episode. So let's have a listen to the track. Love ain't simple with you anymore We have become opposites Now love ain't simple with you anytime Battle line strong Okay, so here we've got not necessarily the kind of track that you might associate with the kinds of interesting little bits of vocal processing that we're going to be doing within this project. But you know what I'm like on this channel. I'm always interested in seeing whether or not we can take the sorts of processing we might associate with one kind of music and maybe apply it to a different kind of music. So let's see where Beat Breaker can take us, even within the context of a slightly more melancholy kind of song like this. Okay, so to apply beat breaking to a vocal part, what I'm gonna do is to duplicate the lead vocal track, which is down here at the bottom. I'm going to then rename this so that we know which track this is, the Beat Breaker vocal. And then what I'm gonna do is to just simply copy this uh, region down to this track. So now what I've got is a perfect duplicate of my lead vocal part. Okay, now why have I done it like that? Well, because what I'm gonna do is to insert as an insert, beat breaker into the process of processing this vocal. Now I've got a chance to decide where I want to put that in my vocal chain and that's actually gonna be really important because I can see that my lead vocal contains some EQ and some compression and a multiband compressor on the end as well. I'm actually using a fab filter plugin for that on this particular project. So where in the chain do I want to put beat breaker? Do I want it put it right at the beginning before the EQ and the compression, or do I want to put it right at the end after all of those separate bits of processing? Well, I'm guessing that it probably won't really matter. But the reason that I'm making the point is just in case you have a reverb as an insert on the tracks that you're working on, because I think Beat Breaker is going to do a less great job in separating reverberant signals. So if you're working with the reverb, I would put Beat Breaker before it. I'm not, so I can put it anywhere. I'm gonna just put it into one of the slots here underneath the compressor. So this is a multi-effect and beat breaker is here. So by default, this isn't going to do anything that the lead vocal isn't doing already. In other words, if I meet the original and we just press play, nothing is going to sound any different. Love ain't simple with you anymore. We have become my love ain't simple with you anytime Battle line strong And the reason for that is because of this display. So I'm not going to summarize it all again. Do go and watch my first Beat Breaker video if you haven't had a chance to watch it already. But effectively what's happening here is that we can think about time passing. This orange line, this linear line, is basically showing us that in a completely linear way, across four beats, there is no interruption to the way that these individual slices are playing back. And it's that that we're going to interrupt in order to create some interesting vocal effects. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add some more points. I'm going to add a new one here. Now to do that, all I need to do is to double click wherever I want an extra point. And I'm actually gonna create a series of new points so that effectively I'm breaking all of these individual time slices up into twice that number. I've got twice the number I had before. And the first thing that I'm going to experiment with is the idea of taking every other one down to the first slice. So that effectively, what we've got is still the same kind of direction of travel that's happening all the way through the track in that the vocal is still kind of proceeding in the way that it was before. This one's refusing to drop to the position where I'd like it to, but it's got there now. Um, but every other slice is being manipulated in terms of its start point. Let's see what that sounds like. Oh, 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 oh,
That's interesting, isn't it? So straight away, what we've effectively got is this kind of really interesting little chopped, gated thing where we've got the vocal kind of being resampled and little bits are kind of catching and producing some interesting little effects. Now, one thing that's interesting also about Beat Breaker is that any individual slice that we reverse the direction of. So in other words, rather than it starting in the bottom left-hand corner and sort of proceeding up to the top right-hand corner, anything that we do to manipulate the way that that might behave particularly reversing that so that the speed plays backwards on this particular slice is effectively going to reverse that slice. The thing that's so fun about processing like this is that quite regularly there's going to be total weirdness um, and we're going to get a little Alvin and the Chipmunks moment. Um, and you know, some of those are going to be joyous and some of them are going to be a total catastrophe, but it doesn't really matter because what we can start to do is to introduce one of my favourite things when it comes to producing music, which is chance and randomization and the unknown. So. You know, if you decide you don't like this idea, no problem. We can, of course, just simply turn that slice back round again. But what we can also do is call on a slightly different slice. So I might actually interrupt this by taking this somewhere else and again, just seeing what happens when we do that. Okay, so we've got that potential as well. For now, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna turn this back the way that it was. I can do that in a couple of ways. Uh, in the previous video on Beat Breaker, I talked about the fact that because this is being ported from the iPad, there's something definitely not quite as tactile about Beat Breaker as there might be in terms of how we can manipulate these slices. But what I am gonna do is whilst I'm gonna keep it in a forwards direction, I'm going to just produce a slightly different kind of offset in terms of the way that that is gonna play. Okay. So what we've done now is we've interrupted time. What I also want to do is to think about potentially introducing some repeats. So again, without thinking too carefully about which ones I'm manipulating, what I'm gonna do is to drag upwards. And the higher up I drag, the more repeats I get. And I can see how many repeats I'm adding per slice here as well. So obviously I can see that that's two, but that's reassuringly telling me that it's two as well. But of course, if I start getting into bigger numbers, it becomes a bit less easy to see. But there's a six repeat section here as well. Now, of course, again, the more I interrupt, the more slices are going to be processed. But we can just spend some time just introducing a little bit of sort of repeating offsets as well. Fantastic. Someone's brought a canary to the recording session. Okay, so let's um, take that back. Much as I'm enjoying that enormously, um, I'm going to just experiment with a slightly different choice there. Okay, so we're getting somewhere now. We've got these little introduction flickery moments that are coming from the repeats. And of course we could take that a little bit further if we wanted to as well. But the thing that's really interesting about Beat Breaker is actually changing the length of the process section of audio. Now, at the moment, what we're doing is we're working with four beats. So effectively, the whole thing that we're looking at is one bar of the project, and then it repeats back round again. 
But remember, part of what Beatbreaker is doing is effectively it's providing us with a kind of, well, the best way to think about it is kind of like a very speed time element, which we can see clearly on this page. OK, so of course, if we change the length of the beats, then we're changing the length of the time. And therefore, the whole of this process is going to sound different. So in other words, if I double the length of the beats that we're working on, it's not just that this pattern is going to play out over a longer period of time, the pattern is going to feel like it's changed completely. And the same thing is going to be true if I go the other way. So if I make it two beats. And how about one beat? I was going to make a joke about modems, but probably half of the people watching this video won't know what a modem is. So if you're above a certain age, insert your own joke about a modem at this point. But this is a really interesting sound. Now at the moment, obviously it's totally nuts, but the reason why I duplicated this track is that of course the lead vocal is just sitting here waiting for us, so we can reintroduce it at any stage. So I'm not going to do that just yet because of course the next thing we could do if we decided that the modem was the thing that was missing from our vocal production, what we could then do would be say okay well obviously it's too much and it's too loud and we could just turn it down and that's fine, we can of course do that. But the other thing we could do would be to enhance this with some other effects. So in fact what I am going to do is to put after Beat Breaker maybe let's say an auto filter and maybe what I'm then going to do is to introduce some LFO movement and maybe I'm going to set that up over a couple of bars so that the kind of undulations in the tone of this sound can change. I'll set this up with a low pass filter or maybe a band pass filter might be a nice idea. And what we'll do is see whether or not we can just get something which is just feeling like it's coming in and out of the mix from a tonal perspective a little bit. Sounds more like a modem now. It's almost like I'm really going after that sound. I kind of suppose I kind of am now that I think about it. And the other thing, of course, we could do would be to think a little bit about maybe, I don't know, some widening. So we could potentially look at something like tremolo, which is obviously going to allow us to move the sound from one side of the mix to another. I don't want to get too bogged down in this because obviously we're talking about Beat Breaker and its potential in this regard, but definitely we're starting to now just fashion something that feels like a little accompaniment to the main lead vocal. Okay, I think I'm into this. Let's have a listen with the lead vocal. Love ain't simple with you anymore. We have become opposites. No love ain't simple with you anytime. Battle I'm strong. So now what I've done is to create something which is much more background, 
where the tone is changing over a little bit of time and where we've got some stereo movement into that as well. Now, if you're not feeling those particular things, that's fine. Of course, we can just take them off and we could um, come back to our main beat breaker pattern. And one thing that would be really interesting without question would be to do what we did in the previous video about beat breaker, which would be to think about automation and to dive into Beat Breaker and to think about potentially mixing up the patterns. So what this allows me to do is to basically sort of fluctuate between the custom pattern that I've created here and some of the others that are available to me. And we also learned in that video that I can swap any of these patterns out for any of the other preset patterns that um, Apple have made for Beat Breaker. So effectively what we can do would be to be, be creating these kinds of worlds of processing behind the lead vocal. In other words, behind the sound that we're listening to, effectively we've just got a chance to add some of those ear candy moments. And I think that's a really interesting way to potentially think about production. Now I said right at the beginning of the video, maybe this isn't the kind of track where you'd associate this kind of processing. I suppose what I'm talking about are within electronic dance music, those sorts of little vocal chops and glitches and flips that we hear all over the place in all kinds of sort of pop and dance based production. And there's no doubt Beat Breaker would be a really interesting place to experiment with some of those things too. In fact, I think the thing to say about Beat Breaker is think about beat as a unit of time, not as a type of instrument. I think most people would think about Beat Breaker as I'm going to put this on beats, drums in other words, but actually think about it as a processor for a unit of time. And if you think about it in that way, it can be used on anything you like.